Anyway, alright, maybe you could do a quick introduction for the stream and then we'll get started. Yeah, sure. So, I think... Let me see. So, I guess I'm basically a slippy kid. I'm like a late slippy kid, but I've also just been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, like, I found out about competitive Melee in, like, 2007, because a kid at my youth group told me about it, but I didn't ever get into it. And then finally around 2013, for some reason, I just start, like, YouTubing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, like, from 2013 to now, I've been following competitive Melee, like, pretty heavily. And then I've had, like, five different times where I was, like, totally sure I was going to finally get into Melee. <laughs> but then I would play for, like, a month or maybe two and then give up. Okay. And then, so now, in this Slippy era, so actually in December of 2020 is when I really started grinding Melee finally. And I've been doing it ever since, like, consistently. So this okay. is the longest stretch that I've had, and it's also the first time that I feel like I've actually improved. Mm -hmm. Like, everything everything before December 2020, I was basically learning, like, the bare basics and, like, a little bit of tech skill, but I had no idea what I was doing and, like, no fundamental understanding of the game at all. But now I'm, like, seven months into grinding it, and, like, I did some coaching with different people. Um, the most I did was Squid. I also did a lesson with Bones, which was cool. And I think I did one lesson with Albert and stuff. So I'm like actually trying to learn stuff and I'm trying to like get a wide like mm -hmm. understanding of the game and especially from Falco's perspective. <clears throat> and like what I really want to do is like play the game intentionally, like where everything I ever do is like completely on purpose and I understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm making progress towards that, but I'm definitely a ways away from it, I think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I would say that like you want your decisions to be conscious in the sense that you know what's happening but in the moment you don't you're, you're not always going to be able to make a conscious decision yeah because but a lot of times it's kind of like um you you prepare consciously so that when the match happens your hands just react to something you know yeah i actually remember your analogy i thought was cool from one of your uh, youtube lessons you were talking about like being the person, like, piloting a robot or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's usually yeah. what I use. I thought, I thought that was pretty good, yeah. That makes mm -hmm. sense to me. Okay, cool. So, I pulled up one of the the VODs, and I think you were saying you, you want, like, a very broad lesson about, like, generally how to play Falco, right? Yeah, so I think what I think would be really cool is if you could, I guess, like, get a feel for, like, what I'm missing in my overall gameplay or, like, what I need to be moving towards or focusing on. Mm -hmm. It's like, so, when I started with Squid a few months ago, I basically do, knew, like, almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And he gave me, like, tons and tons of concepts. Like, his lessons were very, like, learning heavy, and he told me, like, tons of ideas about what to do, which was cool, because before that I had, like, nothing. So now I feel like I'm still trying to implement those ideas. I still can't do all the stuff that he's told me, even after, like, I've been trying that for, like, four months or something. Mm -hmm. But I am starting to do it. Like, he told me about running shine. He told me about, like, dash jump shine, waveland down. And, like, a mm -hmm. lot of, like, shine waveland stuff. That before I talked with him, I wasn't really doing any of this. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, he gave me a lot of kind of, like, simple game plans for different matchups that have helped a lot. But I guess, like, yeah, I really... I don't really feel like, oh, there's, like, one matchup that's giving me trouble. I just kind of am, like, trying to make sure I'm on the right track. And then I'm, like... I guess, like, starting to implement the right things. Like, I guess, like, if what I... How I'm playing is, like, showing evidence that I have the right ideas. Okay. All right, that's a good thing to start off of. Okay, so let me screen share you, and then uh, we'll start... Cool. Start going over the VOD. And I'll sort of go over some general stuff, probably in, like, like in uh, Dolphin or whatever pretty soon. But, like, I just want to see what, what's up with your Falco first. Cool. So, uh, wait, which one are you here? Are you, you're the green one. Okay. Yeah, I uh... So, so far your approaches are definitely a little bit, uh, half, half-baked, kind of. They're, they're just, they're sort of, uh, disrespectful in a way, like, you're not, 
It's not that you're intentionally trying to be disrespectful, but I remember sort of going through this with my Falco, where you're like, well, approaching laser, and then you just sort of approaching laser, and then like kind of try to do something out of it. Yeah. Um, that's just one thing to note so far. We'll go over that in a second. And the ditto is a little weird, too, so sometimes it's a slightly difficult to analyze from. Yeah. So, uh, do you try to play, uh, like, very aggressively? Is that, like, part of your game plan? Um, it kind of is, yeah, but, mm -hmm. like, looking at this, I didn't really choose this as, like, this is a really good sample of how I play. I kind of was just, like, chose this as one that I, like, a game that I lost, so I thought it would be good because I'm playing against someone a little better than me. Mm -hmm. But, like, I do have... So that's actually something I'm interested to talk about, is that my understanding of Falco is that he's kind of like a pressure character, mm -hmm. and it's like you're kind of supposed to keep the pressure on to play him right. Mm -hmm. That, would, But yeah, like... So, so that is like... Yeah. yeah. No, go ahead, sorry. Okay, no. it's So you want to keep the pressure on, you're right about that, Like, bec but like a lot of times that means um, kind of not pulling the trigger, you know? It's kind of like if you're, if you're trying to like mug somebody... <laughs> yeah. and you you're you're pressuring them with your weapon you're like give me your money that that's kind of how falco works he's not really like the type of character who you just want to be like running around you know you're not gonna like you're not gonna get much if you just run around shooting people <laughs> yeah so it's kind of like you want to use the your threats of like your aerials and stuff like that to make your opponent give you openings rather than trying to just fly in on top of them um, so it's kind of like, Falco is, okay, so let me zoom out even more, <laughs> is that like neutral game, a lot of neutral game is all about not over committing. Like that is, you need to like basically burn that concept into your mind that you don't want to over commit at any point. And a lot of times when top players get hit, it's because they thought they weren't committing to anything, but their opponent realized they were and hit them for it. Yeah. So, if you are deliberately sort of going all in on things, you are, you're not accurately protecting your, you're not protecting yourself well enough, and it, it's sort of like a constant overcommitment in the name of like pressure. Like, oh, I need to keep the pressure on, and my opponent won't feel pressure, in, unless I, you know, throw out, throw out aerials and stuff like that. But a yeah. lot of times, throwing out an aerial, if your opponent happens by chance or by a read to do something that counters it, you could lose your stock, you know? Yeah. And so your goal is to beat as many different types of players as possible. And so going for heavy commitment options sort of off the bat puts you in a position where you will always lose to some percentage of those players who happen to just happen for whatever reason to make a decision that counters your decision. Like let's say you play one guy and he does run up shield and you down air it and now you have this nice shield pressure and you're like oh that's great but then you play somebody else and they happen to wave dash back or dash back and then suddenly you're losing. And you, yeah. don't, you don't want this sort of chaos. Your goal should be to mitigate this chaos by not committing to things. And you want your opponent to also be trying to not commit to things and then accidentally overcommit. So that's why you want to put your opponent in situations where you, you like laser them and then you do a little dash dance and you yeah. see what they kind of do and you try to like get them to make a mistake. Because that is, like, a safe way to beat as many opponents as possible, basically. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, in that game, I didn't see myself dash dance at all. That is actually something I've been doing more. Okay. Um, I think that, yeah, I didn't realize. It's actually kind of surprising to me to watch that back because I have been trying to do more dash dancing. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's one of the things... 
Squid told me is like, usually it's like you laser and then dash dance and then do something, or you laser, dash dance, laser again and then do something, but it's like, rarely should you just run at them the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like, unless you do it and they're bad enough that it works, but it, that's not like what you would usually go for. So, um, yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Yeah, so I would have actually expected to see myself dash dance more. I hope I do in the other games. Okay. But that is something I've been working on. But um, so what you were saying about um, you want to like not overcommit and then have them overcommit first. Mm-hmm. Um, I've read like Lod's Guide to Improvement and it's <coughs> about like layers of neutral and stuff and how it's like there's whiff punishing and then there's like mix-ups. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you're talking more about like whiff punishing, right? Because it's like you're waiting for them to do the wrong thing and then you punish it. So. Yeah, okay, so your goal is you against... So, like, let's say you're playing someone and they're, like, way worse than you. You don't want to... Let's say you have these 50-50 mix-ups, right? You don't want to be putting yourself in a position where you have a 50-50 mix-up against someone who you should be beating every time. Yeah. And so your primary... So it's it works in layers in the sense that you should be trying to play a certain way and then if your opponent is good enough to force you to not play that way then you sort of move to the next layer but you never want to forget about the previous ones so like you with punishing a player is your is your goal like even if you're playing like if Zane is playing Mango his goal is he wants Mango to whiff a dumb move and he, let him get a grab. That is like that is what he wants more than anything. And if his and so if your opponent is skilled enough, they will prevent you from playing in a reactive slash whiff punish manner. So like let's say you're playing somebody who's really bad. I'm sure you've noticed this. Or sometimes you're playing somebody and all you have to do is kind of wait for a second, and then they just kind of, like, run up an up smash or something, and then you just get to hit them out of it for free. Yeah. So that's ideal. But then, like, against better opponents, they're not going to give you those things quite so easily. But you still want to do it. You don't, re- like, like, let's say you have a mix-up where, you know, you can aerial in early or do a late aerial. Both of those can be punished by your opponent if they happen to guess right and so you don't really want to do those very much like you're like so you're gonna end up probably doing them a bunch but your goal is that you would want to put yourself so like what's more what's more committal you know trying to aerial in on someone's shield or dash dancing so such that it looks like you're going to and then your opponent might throw something out you know so yeah. a lot of times your dash dances are sort of like a, a less committal substitute for jumping in and aerialing. And yeah. you you might have a chance of like, okay, well, what if I do this dash dance? And like, yeah, sure, dash dance is committal in the sense that you don't have a hitbox out. Your opponent yeah. might randomly hit you. But the amount of, you know, you can shield whenever you want, you can roll, you can full hop still, you're actionable. So it's a lot less commitment than going for a jumping in aerial where your only option is like slightly drift or fast fall, you know? Yeah. So your goal should be to commit as little as possible in order to get an opening. And also, Falco, because he's kind of a slower character, he's not one of the fastest characters in the game, he needs to pick his spots more. So when you're playing Fox, picking your spots is a little bit less important, or Falcon. Because they move so fast, it's kind of unpredictable, and you can... I'm sure you've seen it as Fox a lot of times. Foxes can just sort of nair randomly, and like the odds that you're actually going to be able to punish it are kind of low, because he's yeah. so fast. So, But because Falco is slower, he kind of naturally commits to positions a little bit more, because he can't just fly across the stage in an instant. Yeah. And so because of that, you want to pick your spots more. And by picking your spots, I mean you don't want to fight in positions where you have more, like, risk and stuff than your opponent who might be a faster character who, who can, like, commit less to a position. 
And so yeah. when you see Mango playing really aggressive, where he's just going like laser aerial in, laser laser aerial in, it feels like he's kind of just like choosing like this time I'll laser once an aerial in, this time I'll laser twice an aerial in, you know. But what's actually happening is that he's actually picking his spots. Like, he, he is choosing which one of those options to do based on cues his opponent does. And a lot of times yeah. people will sort of just copy his inputs of, like, laser, dash, back, jump in, or whatever. But he's doing that for a reason, that he, he has he has sort of, like, a, a read on his opponent in that sense. So don't feel pressured to be to be super aggressive, because it's kind of like you need to start out by not committing and by protecting yourself and then once you learn the spots better then you can sort of start like pressing in on their your opponent's vulnerabilities but like don't feel necessarily pressured to like immediately commit to stuff like okay. a lot of times good practice is kind of just like like let's say you're trying to learn a matchup a lot of times it can be kind of good practice to just say like okay you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna laser this character forever i'm just literally gonna run away and only laser and see what they can do about it and a lot of times your opponent will like see, well they kind of get close and then they read your laser and they jump in an aerial and so you go yeah. okay so the laser can draw them in close to try to hit me and so maybe I can figure out, it dependent on the matchup, but you know, maybe I can figure out what I can do to beat their laser read in the future. Yeah. And then let's say, and so like, let's say after you get all that, then your opponent knows, hey, he might look like he's going to laser, but then when I try to hit him, I actually get comboed out of it. You know, maybe you look like you're going to laser and then you dash up shield and then you get a shine out of shield and then your opponent is in shambles, you know? Okay. And, and so, eventually, that will make lasering itself even safer because your opponent has to question themselves whether you're really going to laser or whether you're going to counter them. And That's, um, yeah. Continue. Like what were you going to say? Um, actually, I kind of lost it. <laughs> okay, no worries. So, let's watch this and uh, talk about it a little bit. Okay, so here's like a good example of, it looks, you feel like you're playing sort of safe and protecting yourself here. And you, you generally are, like doing this is not bad, but this dash was like secretly an overcommitment. Like you weren't trying to commit, but you accidentally did and he hit you with the back air. This is the way you want to get hit every time. Like, like these are the mistakes you want to make so you can get better at not overcommitting to this, like, dash dance here. Like, you could have shielded this or whatever. And so yeah. you can look at a situation like this and say, like, okay, um, so what I should have done there is I should have been able to shield his, uh, his back air, and then that would have maintained, like, this neutral situation, you know? And, yeah. And so... When you when you when you're trying to not overcommit to options and you get hit, it gives you this perfect framework of like, okay, how could I have maintained like a neutral positioning here, without without you know, because I really wouldn't think there's a way here where you could like guarantee like, oh, I could have punished that back air, you know, and that's yeah. sort of up to you when you're like watching a video whether you feel like it was something like that or not. But a lot of times, if you're trying to play safe and you get hit. You go, okay, what could I have done to continue being safe there? Whereas, like, let's say he was a dash dancing over here. Or let's say he was doing this on the top platform. So he's he's up here like this. And let's say you just jump up and try to back air him. And then he, he you miss and he hits you. There's not as much to learn from that situation because the only thing you kind of learned is, like, well, that wasn't a very good back air, you know? Maybe next time I shouldn't back air. And it's like, oh, like, like great great job. Like, you learned a lot. It's like, you don't really learn much from that. Whereas, like, keeping yourself generally safe and stuff like that, you'll learn a lot more on, like, match review, basically. Yeah, so I guess, like, the way, the way I've been playing, I feel kind of bad because it's like, I might not have sent you the best selection of VODs. Because I sometimes, like, play with different mindsets, you know? Like, I mostly play on Slippy and, like, Unranked. 
I've done a few like online tournaments, but that's not what I usually do. Mm -hmm. So like I switch between what I'm trying to do in matches, and like sometimes I'm of actually course. just trying to implement like tech skill, mm -hmm. and then in those matches I'm not watching my opponent nearly as much, and I'm probably like dash dancing less and less. That's what I'm focusing on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then there are other times where it's like I'm playing to win and trying to like put the whole thing together instead of like just trying to get specific things to happen. Mm -hmm. so, I, I get what I get what you mean. Um, I think people's matches indicate more in general than they sort of realize. I a yeah. lot of times we'll have people saying similar things like that, and it's like I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's just sort of like we're trying to extract generalized lessons from what happens here, and just sort of because like we could have reviewed a video from any other Falco, you know and been talking about the same concepts but it, we're just using you because this is these are your vods and so it might help you like get into the zone because you're like oh i kind of remember this match or something like that you know but yeah. this this isn't like a direct critique of every movement you make or anything like that yeah i guess it's hard i'm trying to like resist the impulse to be defensive about stuff. i <laughs> fully understand i it hurts to watch my vods too but that's the thing is I'm I'm also not like I'm not reviewing like oh you should have hit that tech chase what are you doing you know like I'm I'm just thinking of like all right what is like generally like what are things that I see that might be good like lessons for you or something like that you know cool. <laughs> that's weird yeah it happens okay I stop tilt. Yeah, so, like, this is kind of, like, the thing I'm talking about, like, where you're doing this, and, like, laser, approaching laser, this is 100% a commitment, you know? Like, yeah. there's, there's, if your opponent, let's say you did laser, approaching laser like this, and the falcon happened to nair into your second laser, and just killed you for it, yeah, like there, there wouldn't be any information you could gain out of that, except for, like, I guess he read me, I guess it's a mix-up, you know, people a lot of times will fall back into that, where they're like, oh, it's just it's just a mix-up, you know, you just kind of do it, and sometimes you're right, but but that's not what you want, you want 100% win rate, you know, even if, even if that's technically, like, somehow impossible, you want to do everything you can towards the 100%, you don't want to do mix-ups, mix-ups are, like, the last resort. <laughs> right, and I guess, like, that that's what I didn't understand about Lod's guide before. Like he called that like the highest layer of mm -hmm. neutral, and I guess I didn't understand it's like, but that's like a bad thing. It's like the last resort you don't want to get to if you don't have to, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's just like oh man, like I have to just throw a mix up against this person, you know, <laughs> because I can't bait them. Right, if they're resisting that. Mm -hmm. Um, so for my approach, it's like I'm trying to. I, like, have a really strong, I guess, like, improvement mindset, and I have for this whole time. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really feel like... I've kind of been thinking about how to, like, understand this for myself, but it's, like, I never really feel like it's, like, I'm ready to just, like, plant myself, root myself in the ground and with my current level of skill and just, like, see how good I can do against people with those skills. It's, like, I'm constantly trying to learn and add things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, like, I see a difference between it's, like, trying to incorporate new things versus taking the things you have and trying to win with them as much as possible, you know? And it's, like, I'm almost never in the mode where it's, like, this is what I know how to do, so I'm going to see how I can use this to win. I'm mm -hmm. almost always, like, this is, like, these are the new things I'm trying to learn how to do and just always learning, learning, learning. And I'm wondering if that's... It's like, I kind of like don't want to slow down on the way to like learning all the stuff I need to know, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, but I'm wondering like if that's like a bad thing or if, because like I don't really care about winning low level melee matches, it's like my goals are very long term, it's like I want to get to high level melee, and I don't really care about the, it's like I don't dislike the journey, like I like learning and improving, but I don't really care about like wins right now, like if I beat people who are around my level right now, it doesn't mean that much to me. Mm -hmm. Like, the only thing that really means something to me right now is, like, evidence that I'm getting further. Mm hmm So, like, I don't know, like, I'm wondering, it's, I don't know if I'm, like, 
psyching myself out because it's like, am I just gonna like keep adding tools to a toolkit and then eventually I'll have like a huge toolkit that I never use? You know, like, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, I have like perfectionist tendencies and stuff like that, you know? So, um, okay, it's kind of a complicated answer, but like, okay, so I'll just sort of focus on it like part by part and you might have to remind me of parts of this. So, sure. um, the what i personally believe and this is you know subjective but i feel like i it's a pretty good method for it is you you want sort of this this like cycle of expansion and contraction to your style so and i've noticed this really heavily when i've been learning falco is that you want sort of a mix where you go okay like these so you, you learn a bunch of tools, right? And then you, you have those tools together and you say, okay, how far do these tools carry me? How well do they work against a player of a certain level? And so a lot of times for me, I'll be like learning, learning, learning. And then maybe I have like one day where I just try to like win as hard as I can just like one day after like two weeks or something, three weeks of learning. I'll yeah. have one day where I just try to put it all together and just try as hard as I can to win with like all of my you know senses. Like I'm just trying of like, this is me, I'm using this character, I wanna win. And then usually I end up very disappointed because especially on the video, usually when you're trying your absolute hardest to win, your emotions sort of color what you're, how you feel about the match. And then when you, like, if you win, you're like, man, I did really well, you know? <laughs> or yeah. if you lose, you're like, oh, I did really badly. And then usually when you rewatch the video, it's very clear that there are missing pieces because ultimately, like, when you're going to be playing in tournament, it is the whole package together. And yeah. so what you need to, if you, if you kind of learn a million disconnected things, you know, um, kind of in like the robot analogy, you know, just to keep that going, or like the mech kind of analogy. It's like you, you keep working on these little pieces of technology for your mech, but you never like incorporate it into like your full, your full robot and actually like use it all together and try to switch between each of these things at once, you know, then like... Yeah eventually you just end up with like a million different like little modules and no yeah. real way to like combine them together and so that's why i think your goal should be you know come up with three or four new pieces of technology kind of practice them for like a couple weeks or a few weeks and you then just take like one night just like a few hours of melee and just try to win as hard as you can with it and then analyze those videos for for like basically what should i be which tools should I be adding next? Because you can add, you know, there's thousands and thousands of little optimizations you can make in this game. And but yeah. you don't you don't really know what the most effective tools to add to your toolkit are until you try to win with everything you currently have. Because then you go, Wow, like I was trying to win as hard as I could and I kept missing edge guards, or I kept missing this one type of combo, or I kept jumping in in this dumb way, you know? Yeah. So, because eventually, you know, like I said before, that sort of trying to win at all cost mindset is the way you're going to be eventually playing in tournaments. So you kind of you kind of want to like bring that up with your level of like learning at the same time. But it doesn't take nearly as much time. Like I said, you can have like a three hour session or a two hour session in one night after weeks where you just try to win. And usually, if you go over the videos, that's 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 like enough for me usually. Okay. That's cool. Um, so another thing I've noticed kind of related to this is it's like there's certain things I can practice on my own, but then there's like also things that are very like experience based that mm -hmm. are like hard to get better at without just like playing people a bunch. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that I'm wondering about is like, I guess how to balance that. Like, because I know there's a lot of different philosophies to getting better and mine skews more on the solo practice side versus the, like, just play people all day side. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know. Like, if I... Is it, like, okay, I guess, for me to just, like, work a lot on the things that I can do and, like, character control and things like that? Even if it's, like, I don't have the experience where I know, like, oh, people always spot dodge in this position or whatever. Or, like, if it takes me longer to get to that, 
like the like battle experience um the so i always tell people you can learn the game in any order as long as you learn the whole thing (laughs) so it doesn't actually matter which parts of the game you practice as long as you keep in mind that eventually you're going to have to learn these other parts of the game But a lot of times what happens is people sort of, they have a certain skill in a certain area or like not even a skill, you know, but like they like, they like enjoy a certain part of the game. Like some people really just enjoy playing the game, but they hate VOD analysis and they hate, you know, thinking about the game too hard. And it's like, that is okay because if you have a bunch of experience and then you do a little bit of solo practice, then you go, oh, hey suddenly I'm playing these people that I'm grinding against every day and that little bit of solo practice helped so much in these few situations, you know? And then, so you can learn the game from that direction. It's totally fine. But you can also solo practice, get really good character control, and then every time you have an experience, you have more like of a tech skill sort of fundamental yeah. set to to work on to improve on that sort of thing so it's just you can you can do it in any order you want just don't forget about the other part <laughs> that's good to know like i don't like the feeling of not being in control in the game oh or yeah like, me, me too <laughs> or like struggling to be in control because then it feels like it's like i'm like already like losing a game by myself as mm-hmm. i'm losing a game against them you know mm-hmm. and it's like it's like I can't even do my half of this equation, much less like beat their half. Yeah, no, <laughs> like for like it's kind of like I notice a lot of Falcos. They do like laser jump, like you know they just do laser and they they just jump in and down air, you know. And a lot of times the reason for that is that because they don't have enough control to to um what's what am I saying? They they don't have enough control to avoid committing. And, like, they've noticed that every time they try to kind of play a slower, more defensive neutral game, they just get hit. And so what they do is, rather than being like, okay, this is a part of the game that I have to learn, and I need better character control, I need to learn how to commit less, they just avoid that, and they go, okay, well, I always lose when I do that. But if I jump in immediately after a laser, a lot of times I just hit people, and that's that's good. And they, they kind of fall into that trap, and that's why you have so many bad Falcos. Because they never learned to really control their character because every time they get nervous that they're in a weird spot, they just kind of aerial or something like that, you know? So yeah. I think, like, staying staying open-minded on, like, these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, I need to fix my weaknesses, and not sort of using any of your strengths as a crutch is the most is one of the most important parts of improvement. Okay, that's good. I guess, like, I, like, also, like, I don't feel bad if I'm playing someone in, on unranked and losing mm-hmm. if I feel like I'm in control. But if I'm, like, playing someone and losing and I feel like I don't even have control of myself, I just, like, feel terrible about mm-hmm. the game in general. So that's kind of, like, why I've been doing, I've been doing, like, kind of a crazy ratio of, like, solo practice to playing people mm-hmm. for a while. I probably did, like, a month where I would do, like, 98% solo practice. And it's, like, just now I'm kind of, like, feeling like playing people again. But it's good to know, I guess, like, if that's... It's okay to, like, learn in that order, like you were saying. Like, you could learn in a different order. Because it's, yeah. like... I hear some people being, like, oh, like, just get your butt kicked a billion times and eventually you won't, like, suck as bad. But it's, like, I don't like doing that when I can't even control my character because it's, like, what's the point of this if mm-hmm. I can't even do my part yet, you know? But... I don't know. So that's good to know that I can do it in a different order. Yeah, no, it's totally fine to do it in a different order. Just also understand that, like, despite all of your solo practicing, when you get into real matches and you try to use all of it, it, like, won't work. (laughs) And you have to kind of, like, accept... And that, so that's kind of also why I tell people to, like, sort of try to bring everything up at once. Like, always just, whatever part of the game bothers you the most, and you kind of want to avoid the most, I think you should usually do that, because it's very easy to be in a comfort zone. And so, like, it's kind of like, you know, if you sit, if you sit in your room all day practicing punches in the air, you know, getting into a real fight will throw you into situations you're not really comfortable with and i think like if you spend 
five years in your room punching alone and then like then you go into a fight it's going to be like a very painful transition because it's like lopsided you know yeah and so like i think like it's important to like not let any aspect of your training or like of your play fall too far behind everything else it's it's certainly okay to focus on things and sort of forget about other things and it's like you're totally okay for doing that but you just have to make just have to know that the more imbalanced you allow yourself to become the more it's going to hurt when you try to bring up the thing that's 10 miles you know behind you <laughs> yeah i guess like that makes sense and like for a lot a lot of the time thus far when I'm like losing a match or I watch a match that I lost, I feel like it's like, well, I didn't necessarily lose it because I don't know what to do. I lost, like, even more fundamentally, I lost it because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So like, but I know it's like melee is really hard and it just takes a long time to be able to control your character well, right? Like, yeah, definitely. the type of control that like really good melee players can do, I think like takes years to get there. Mm -hmm. It seems like. It does. But I don't know. Like, <laughs> I've kind of just been feeling like, like, so I told you before, I got a lot of good ideas from Squid about various things mm -hmm. and like different matchups and like kind of like frameworks he had for certain things and like how to understand it. But it's like, even though he told me that stuff like four months ago, I still like, I'm like just kind of getting to be where I can actually do it in practice. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in practice as in like acted out. So like in matches as well. And it's like, I don't know, like I doing stuff like shine out of shield it's like I can now like sometimes do that against a human opponent and that took like a really long time to get there you know but like I don't know like I kind of my feeling is like I just want to keep grinding stuff until I feel like I can actually control myself and then worry about like why I'm losing because it's like I don't know if I just know that I'm losing because I can't even control my character then why worry about anything else but I don't know so what kind of solo practice are you doing so usually what I do it's pretty much a little bit of Uncle Punch stuff, but a lot of it is just, like, comboing a CPU. But not just comboing, but, like, doing specific things I'm trying to do against, like, a level 1 CPU. Mm -hmm. But, like, when I'm trying to do, like... So for a long time, I was just bad at, like, the basic pillar combo stuff. So I would just, like, play, like, a level 1 Falco on Final Destination and just try to get pillar combos for a long time and just, like, work on the movement of, like, shine, wave, dash, down air, etc. Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel like it's helped a lot. Like, I've been doing that for a long time, and it's, like, even though it's, like, kind of... Ba some of it was basic stuff, but I am, like, way more comfortable with it now than I used to be. And, like, running shine. Like, I would just, like, laser running shine Falcos a bunch and, like, then turn that into a combo and do that kind of stuff. So it was very, like, one-sided, and it got me, like, some, like, mini bad habits. Like, <laughs> I would, like, edge guard the level 1 CPU, and all it ever does is, like, a 45-degree angle Firefox or whatever. And then, like, sometimes I would try to do that against a human, and obviously they didn't do it. But, like, for the most part, though, it's, like, for the stuff that was on my end, it actually felt like it was really helpful. Like, I would just try to, like, think what I want to get better at is starting a combo with Running Shine. And then I would just, like, do that against the CPU. Or, like, do, like, Laser Dash Dance, Laser Running Shine, or, like, little mm -hmm. sequences like that, and do them against level 1 CPUs. Okay, so, yeah, I, I think that that stuff is really good. But also keep in mind, so, like, you're saying that, like, you don't really care about, like, wins and losses on, like, unranked or against kind of, you know, like, kind of, like, worse players, you know? Yeah. And that's really good. But you, you also have to be careful that you you don't, like, secretly care. <laughs> because, like, a lot of times... It's kind of like what I was saying before this lesson is... When I'm playing people on unranked or when I'm playing people, most most people in general... I, I basically am solo practicing. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. I win or lose. So, like, let's say, you know, how do you get good at wave dashing out of shield on Fox Up Smash, you know? And it's kind of like, well, you need to have a cue that Fox Up Smashes your shield and then you wave dash over and shine it. And that's something you can practice, um, you know, in Uncle Punch or something like that. But then there's there's a lot of things that have to do with character control. Like let's say, okay, um, 
this guy throws out a nair, like Falcon throws out a nair, and then I want to do a down air on his shield. Like, I want to try to down air him, but I might down air his shield, so I want to, like, fade back a little bit and be outside of his grab range. That's something that might happen, you know, in, yeah. in, a, in a real match, and you're not... It's, it's kind of a complex situation, so you're not going to be necessarily able to, like, get... Like, you can use 20xx replays and stuff, but there's always going to be a little bit of variance in the game. And yeah. so, like, sort of going into matches that you don't really care about the result of, which is, it's good to do that during practice, but using it as basically practical solo practice. And, like, yeah. practicing controlling your character in situations that come up often against these characters in, like, a practical environment, I think is, like, really effective. Because it's it, it seems like you kind of see it as like very separate or like uh, I don't really know the right the right way to say it, but I like I think that based on what you've said, I think that is probably the best direction for you to go in, rather than I'm gonna solo practice a bunch and then I'm gonna go into the matches and I'm going to try to implement the things I learned. Like it's good to do that. But, like, I always try to focus on what somebody needs the most or what they're probably the weakest at. And I think sort of, like, getting into matches and practicing practical tech skill in order to learn better control of your character is something that might benefit you a lot. Yeah. Okay, so... That makes sense. I, I just... Like... Yeah, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. One of the reasons, I feel like I maybe used to do that more, but something I noticed, and I feel like I've heard people kind of say this, is like, when you're playing someone better than you, it tends to like make you play a lot worse, like technically, you know? Mm -hmm. And definitely at the level I'm at, I think I run into more people who are better than me than people who are worse than me. So I guess like, it's kind of like when I would try to just like play random people a lot, and then like not really know their skill going in a lot of times they would just be better and then it's like hard to even do the stuff i feel like i know how to do because they're just kind of running over me and then that would make me want to like i don't know i guess practice, practice it more right with less or like with weaker opposition because i also another thing about my situation i'm like a new i guess <laughs> a new breed of person getting into melee who has like zero friends or contacts who are into melee mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like kind of like doing it and I don't want it to stay that way forever, but it's, like, right now, it's, like, COVID and everything and, like, not being able to go to stuff, really. Mm hmm And, like, finally getting serious about the game. Like, I have some people I, like, kind of know from online, but I don't really know, like, oh, I know I can hit up this guy who I'm a little better, a little bit better than and just play him for a while. Like, I don't really have a lot of people I know and, like, I know their skill level. Mm hmm So, like, it's been a lot of unranked stuff. Because I also, I have, like, a job and stuff and I don't, have like all the time in the world to practice so i try to do it like really efficiently mm -hmm. and it's hard to like beat that with unranked you can just like instantly be playing someone mm -hmm. uh, so i guess it's like it it's like like i said i it so to me from my perspective it feels kind of like you you secretly care about the unranked matches where yeah. like you're like well i don't care if i win or lose and that's why i like to practice you're like but also when i play on ranked i get beat up and that doesn't feel good, so I want to go practice. And but a lot you like, but a lot of times you have to you have to kind of see through your own like yeah. ruse <laughs> and be like, okay, wait, no, I do dislike getting beat up by these people, but that is a very effective way to practice. Like you want yeah. you want to be balanced, you know. And so, I think. Just sort of what I recommended before, I think, is really good. Like, I think just try to play people from your mindset of practicing, and if you get beat up a bunch, then it's okay. Like, it's kind of like, you know, waiting... Like, let's say you're doing you're doing some practice or something, and you combo a CPU, and you up and you up air them, or let's say you're practicing shine up B, and you shine up B them off the top, and then they go... Ah! And it's like five seconds before the, the CPU will actually come back and you can beat them up again, depending on, you know, what you're doing. Like if you're yeah. uncle punching or something. And it's kind of like, 
you can kind of see you getting comboed as that. Like, it's just like a small break. Think of it, you know, like a normal fighting game where, like, your opponent kind of gets a second to do their thing. It's not a big deal. And then you get to practice your stuff. Okay. So it's just try to remove yourself emotionally from it and just be like, I'm going to, like, so, like what I will actually do is I will be like, I'm going to practice late aerials, you know? And then I'll just play somebody, I'll go on unranked or whatever, and I'll just try to hit late aerials. And if I, like, literally I'll just dash dance and then I'll not even shoot lasers and I'll just try to hit late aerials on people. <laughs> and if I lose to them, that's doesn't you know it doesn't matter it's basically just computer practice but you get like a special computer that is in some sense trying to avoid you and hit you yeah it's just a very advanced ai <laughs> yeah that's basic. that's how i look at it it's like it's an ai that like is kind of trying to play the game <laughs> and so it a lot of times is like very effective quote solo yeah. practice to do that so yeah i do I should say, like, I do have, like, a lot of emotional, I guess, like, struggles with Melee, and I mm -hmm. think that's why I've quit the game multiple times. So, like, I didn't mean, like, I don't care whether I win or lose. Like, I definitely care. Like, I feel it a lot. I'm just, what I was actually trying to say is, like, I don't really care about, like, racking up wins, like, mm -hmm. a resume, or, mm -hmm. like, entering a bunch of stuff to get, like, good like wins at my level or whatever mm -hmm. but i do care i definitely care a lot about the outcome all the time because it's just and like i don't necessarily see that as a good thing i'm just saying it's like a fact is that oh like, yeah yeah i have like a strong emotional investment in melee and i think it's just that like the game like means a lot to me you know like that's why it's like i've been following it for so long and like wanting to play for so long mm -hmm. and like actually doing it even though it's like i know like i'll probably never even play this exact person again it doesn't matter who wins or loses or whatever but it's just like it just feels bad as I'm like trying to do something and then just like totally failing at it and mm -hmm. getting destroyed. I don't know. Like, if there, do you think I could have like useful practice against somebody who like minimum two stocks me every game? Like, could that still be good practice? Yes, but you have to focus on the right stuff. It's kind of like okay. So wait, so what I want you to do, right, is I want you to take your mentality from when you're solo practicing and just stick it on to real games and just try to so like let's say you get two stocked in a game or three stocked in a game but let's say the one stock you took you felt really if you felt was really clean that's a success like that there's nothing bad about that but let's say it's a it's a it's a one stock game this time you got really close but he sd'd once and you accidentally forward smashed him trying to drop off a platform one of the stocks and then like you you did a tournament winner and then you grabbed ledge and then you refreshed just perfectly to edge guard his side b or whatever like that that's not a good game you know <laughs> yeah. and so you just have to focus on like i am going to play well and like I am going to... The thing is, playing well, it doesn't have anything to do with winning because you're, you're practicing. That's the whole point. So, like, let's say you're like, all right, I'm going to practice this dash dance. And you start the dash dance, and your opponent just runs up with a narrow knee. Rah, rah, you know, and they're just beating you up super hard. Yeah. Just, just, like, let go of the controller. Like, let them finish their combo, come back, try it again. Like, it, it is literally solo practice if you manage to get past the pain of getting hit <laughs> yeah and so just don't think it like don't be like i'm getting hit you know think my opponent is comboing falco you know and now it's my chance after i get back from their, their knee combo it's my chance to try to get clean shield pressure or something like that and just sort okay. of try to focus on that rather than frustration that you can't control your character enough to win because the line between solo practice and playing games is not really there too much and i think that's why i don't solo practice very often but i also wouldn't consider myself somebody who's like oh you just get beat up for hours until you get good like sub let your subconscious deal with it basically yeah. i i try to very consciously like oh i'm playing somebody i'm gonna try to like so what I'll do a lot of times is I kind of like let my autopilot go for like the majority of stuff 
even if it's good or bad or whatever, and then I find areas to focus in. Like, I'm going to try wave dash in Shining, and I'll just sort of do whatever, it doesn't really matter, and then I try to wave dash in Shine, and my entire focus is on, like, doing that cleanly. Yeah. So, that's sort of, like, my, my prescription for you, I think, based on everything that I, I've been, all the info I've been given. Okay. Beca because, like, your goal should be to be balanced and target your weaknesses and those that seems like it's kind of the weak the weakness here in terms of like mentality at least yeah i think it definitely has been like holding me back hmm? like i do think that that has been holding me back in some ways mm -hmm. like yeah just like not feeling comfortable with just playing people like we even if yeah because Sometimes. what a lot of people will do is they're like, okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to solo practice. And then they'll solo practice, they'll dash dance, they'll wave dash around, they'll wave land off platforms a bunch, and they go, great, I can do it. And then they get into a match, and somebody tries to hit them, and they completely whiff their tech skill that they just practiced for three hours, you know? Yeah. And it's like, the reason for that is that they were just practicing moving, they weren't practicing, oh, I see my opponent jump at me. Therefore, this tech skill needs to happen. Yeah. And so with a different stimulus, you're going to have a completely different uh, result. Like, it'll, it'll follow a completely different, like, neuron pathway in your brain from, like, responding to a threat and performing tech skill versus trying to time it. And yeah. so, and so, like, you really want to, like, try to train effectively for, like, practical situations. And a lot of times when you see good players, I think um, PPMD is really good at this, is when he solo practices, he's basically shadow boxing while he's solo yeah. practicing. So if he's practicing a certain laser, he's very clearly imagining, like, his opponent doing something, and then he responds with that laser. And then when in the game when the game happens, he's trying to see this situation equals this laser response, and it helps yeah. a lot more to sort of code that into your brain than just sort of moving without threats around. So like that's basically like how he could get so good at the game back at a time with like bad practice tools and like not high level competition, right? Like mm -hmm. same with Armada. I, I mean, he would play yeah. against CPUs all day, but he was shadow boxing the entire time. Yeah, so, um, I guess, like, that's another thing, like, for me, I have, like, not the most, I can definitely see, like, a lot of improvements in my matches with real people when I actually do them. Mm -hmm. Like, it's definitely, like, worlds better than it was, like, months ago. That's good. But I also feel like, this is, this is just, like, the general thing of gaining experience, I feel like, because it's, like, a few months ago, like, at all times in a match, I would just feel like I have zero idea what's going to happen next, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. like, really uncomfortable. Because it's like I just don't have the experience to know what players are gonna do and like what, like what situations how they're going to unfold, and that's getting better. But it's like, do I need like more I guess real experience to even be able to shadow box well? Because I feel like I don't even always know like what to imagine. Or do yes, I just, like, yes. The answer yeah. is very simple to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes sense. And that's why a lot of times I tell people, you know, let your real matches that you play inform your solo practice of like. Oh, I keep getting hit by this thing, you know, or like I keep messing up my ledge dashes and then you go, okay, you know what? Fine. I'm going to sit there and uncle punch and shine at a shield. Like I, I did that not super recently, but a couple months ago, basically like, um, you know, if Fox drills your shield as Falco, you don't have a guaranteed shine based on, you know, staleness and the timing of the drill and everything. But you kind of can't, you can get like a shine out of shield on drill like pretty often, you know? But I was getting it like one out of every like 20 times. And yeah. so I was getting really frustrated with that. And I go, okay, fine. So I went into Uncle Punch and I had Fox full hop drill over and over or 20XX or whatever. I think it's Uncle Punch, they have like a shield, shine out of shield drill. And then I just tried to shine out of shield that over and over and over for like a couple hours. And then I didn't even practice it again. And I didn't even think about it again. But now, like, a couple months later, my Shine Out of Shields on Fox Drill got a lot better just because I, I basically accelerated my experience in that one situation rather than, like, 
Because the thing is, people, you know, they, they'll just grind, and they'll be like, oh, well, you just try to shine out a shield, Fox Drill, you know, every time, and then three years later, they can do it, because they've encountered the situation a thousand times, let's say, you know? Yeah. But, like, let's say you encounter the situation a hundred times, and you're getting really irritated that you keep losing it. Then you go, it's solo practice time, you know, to the solo practice cave, you know, and you go and you, you get, you, you rack up 500 more experiences of that situation. Then you're a lot closer to, you know, just for example, the, the 1000 that you needed to be able to do it correctly every time. Right. And, and so playing the game gives you, it informs your so it should inform your solo practice of what exactly you need to practice and like which parts of the game you need extra solo experience on to get better okay and then guess, you're yeah. you're like th the thing is is like i always tell people like you want to focus on your weaknesses and like always move towards these uncomfortable directions but then like still respect your strengths in the sense that like a lot of players at your level don't solo practice much, you know? And yeah. so that is like a potential advantage for you that you are good at solo practicing. You can sit down and you can solo practice for a while. And so even though you're focusing on sort of like the things you don't do a lot, don't like people, I don't know, people just sort of have this fear that like, oh, but if I, I have these strengths, then if I focus on my weaknesses, my strengths get like weaker. And it's like, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's still there like just like you're you're gonna like you'll you'll always be good at spending some time solo practicing you'll just get better at doing it when you work on your weaknesses okay that's cool i guess like do you think so should i do like some kind of like solo warm-up at least i guess or just like go in cold to playing people um like tech skill warm-up that's something? just preference i think it's totally okay. fine to do a tech skill warm-up um Ooh. Especially if, like, like when I go on Unranked, I don't do a tech skill warm-up because the people on Unranked are my warm-up. But, like, I've been yeah. playing the game for forever. So, <laughs> like, if, if, you're, if you're not quite as comfortable, like, doing a solo practice warm-up, totally fine. And then just, just be like, okay, oh, it's this character? All right, sick. I'm going to practice, you know, trying to space my aerials really well or whatever. And then just kind of see what happens. Recording these experiences is, is really good. It's kind of, so this is sort of just like a personal experience lately where like sort of my thoughts from Melee have kind of intersected with other parts of my life. And it's that I've been swimming a lot lately and I've been trying to get better at different, you know, strokes in the pool. And it's really frustrating because you watch a bunch of videos and you, you like think about emotion for swimming a bunch of times, but then yeah. you, you can't, you still can't really do it. And it's, it's frustrating. And so what I've learned that I have to do is I just have to swim a ton of laps with really bad form so that like when I actually like learn, when I actually watch these swimming videos that help with the form or I study then I have more experiences to let those let the studying inform it, you know? And so a lot of times you just have to kind of go for it and then use that to inform your studying later. So that's just sort of like experience from that I've had personally where I notice this sort of aspects of training coming in, in other areas. That's cool. Yeah, like, I guess that's my... That's like one of my things also just like in life but also in melee is like i'm like the perfectionist tendencies is like i need this to go right the first time even though that's like impossible <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah know? it's it's so. really difficult no i'm the same way like i want to know everything and then just do it and it's like it stinks that i have to do it badly in order to learn how to do it well because i'm like well i don't want to you know get bad habits <laughs> being yeah. bad i just want to do it but sadly yeah. that's not the way our nervous systems work yeah but yeah that's cool like i gotta get the i want to get the experience it's like i in theory i want to do it and it's just like my just like perfectionist emotions get in the way sometimes yeah no i i <laughs> i totally get it that's why i always say is like it's just whatever is the most painful you know <laughs> like for a lot of for for me for a long time it was like watching my losses 
Yeah. And I was just like, no, I don't want to watch. Like, I'll lose in tournament, and it hurts, and, like, I don't want to. And I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it later, and then I'm like, I'll play the matchup instead of watching it. And I'm like, you know what? I just played bad. I'm fine, you know? And I did that for, like, years, and it was so bad. <laughs> hmm? Uh, nothing. And so I don't know. I just realized later it's just kind of the parts of the game you subconsciously avoid are usually the parts of the game you need to focus on. And I think the problem that people have with that is that it's not very fun. Yeah. And it's kind of just like, yep, like getting good at things isn't fun. <laughs> there's yeah. that there's that little bit of there's that teensy bit of fun when you realize your practice is paying off. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is sick. Like, I focused on my, like, the payoff comes later. Like, I learned to study my losses, and then I noticed improvements in tournament. And that's that little bit of fun of, like, woo, yeah. But, like, ultimately, the major if you really want to get good at things, and especially if you want to get good at things, like, quickly and effectively, it's not fun. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's the Getting better is the opposite Work. of fun. Yep. It's, there's a lot of growing pains. <laughs> it, it, growing pains is the perfect way to describe it so i think um we're about in an hour now but i i hope i gave you sort of a good direction to go from here um yeah, I think so. the game is really complicated and there's like so many different avenues that i can go on but i think that uh if you practice this for a while you'll you'll have a lot better idea of like what you should work on and stuff rather than just sort of wanting general advice for falco as a whole Okay, yeah, and, like, yeah, there's, like, a bunch of different matchups and stuff, and I don't always know, like, I'm good at this or I'm bad at this, because mm -hmm. there's just, like, so much variability to everything all the time because of my inexperience. Right. So I'm just kind of plugging along, I guess, mm -hmm. trying to get, get that experience. Mm hmm And just stay focused on doing things that, like, like you said, you want to control your character, you know? Yeah. So consider how well the matches went or how badly the matches went entirely on how well you controlled your character and on nothing yeah, that's, else that's a good point I need to like i don't know you like write that on my arm or something <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like not forget that no i know i know that feeling entirely it's very difficult when you're playing you're like you know what this guy needs a forward smash in the face and it's like no no calm down like <laughs> so yeah. um yeah and if you if you feel like you're kind of confused about anything that came up during the lesson or you just if you know you have any questions or, or concerns or anything like feel free to hit me up about it don't don't worry okay. don't worry about that so thanks yeah anyway all right i hope you have a good day and yeah, i'll you too. Thanks yeah, a lot. talk to you later